Hello everyone, Dr. Jason Silva here, and today we're going to be discussing the three levels of measurement, and we're going to be looking at a few examples in Excel. However, before we get started, it's important to recognize what these three levels of variable measurement are. First, there are nominal variables, which are categorical and they cannot be ordered. So for example, male, female would be a nominal variable because it's categorical, one, two, or zero, one, male, female, and these are not ordered. So being male is not inherently better than being female. Next, we have ordinal variables, which are categorical, but they can be ordered. So for example, if we were to look at a Likert scale, measuring whether or not you like this course on a scale of one to five, one being I very much like this course, two being I like this course, three being neutral on this course, four being I dislike this course, and five being I very much dislike this course, a Likert scale. This is an ordinal variable, which is ordered and categorical. The third level of measurement is what we refer to as an interval variable. Interval level variables are ordered and they have categories that sit on a number line. In other words, they are what we refer to as continuous variables. So for example, temperature would be an interval variable and we measure the temperature on a scale from zero to 120 degrees, for example. Now, the reason this is considered an interval variable is because it goes below the zero line. In other words, it can be less than zero degrees outside. We sometimes consider interval and ratio as two separate variables, which is why you'll sometimes find descriptions of four levels of measurement. However, at the introductory stages, it's easier to think of interval and ratio as the same style of measurement variable. Ratio, on the other hand, refers to variables that have a zero baseline and cannot go below zero. So for example, age would be a ratio variable because there's no such thing as someone being less than zero years old. So now that we have a general understanding of the three levels of measurement, let's take a look at some variables in Excel. As you know, I am a mass shooting scholar, and we're going to return to the 16 mass shooter cases that we discussed in the previous video, introducing data in Excel. Here we see the variables are male, female, education, age, the year that the mass shooter engaged in their attack, as well as the number of fatalities or deaths and injuries that occurred during the attack. Male, female is a nominal level variable. It is binary, meaning it is one, zero. Another example of a binary variable would be yes, no. Here we have a code in an cell, male as one and female as zero. Education, on the other hand, is an ordinal level variable. And here I have it coded on a scale of one through six. So if you remember from our last class, we can sort this variable by going to sort. And we can see that there are threes, fours, fives, and a six. Now, in this ordinal level variable, I have coded education as one, two, three, four, five, six different categories. There are no ones and twos you'll see. One refers to those who were in elementary school and two refers to those who are in middle school. However, with no ones and twos, we see there was no mass shooters who were in elementary and middle school. The first category in the ordinal variable we see are threes, and this refers to those who were currently in high school but did not graduate. Four refers to those who graduated high school, five refers to those with a college education, and six refers to those with an advanced degree. So in this example, we only see one individual with an advanced degree. Age, on the other hand, is what we refer to as an interval or ratio variable. In this example, it would be a ratio variable because you can't be less than zero years old. And again, sorting the variable, we see that the youngest perpetrator in this sample is 17 years old. And the oldest perpetrator on this continuous variable line or ratio variable line is 54 years old. Fatalities and injuries are also considered continuous ratio variables. In other words, there could not be any less than zero fatalities or injuries. 
And so it would be called a ratio variable. And here we see the number of fatalities in most instances was four. Uh, and there are four instances with that. And the deadliest instance in this sample is 22 fatalities. Now, let's say we wanted to turn one of these variables from a continuous into a nominal variable. So let's say we wanted to turn fatalities into a nominal variable. Well, we can add a new column and we can say fatalities, nominal. And let's say we wanna focus on instances that involve 10 or more fatalities. So we would code all the instances with 10 or more fatalities as one, and all the instances of less than 10 fatalities as zero. And now we've turned our fatalities variable, which was previously a ratio continuous variable, into a nominal variable. Let's think of another example of changing a variable. We can say, for example, education, currently categorized as an ordinal variable with one of six different categories of education, could be considered a ratio level variable if we, instead of using these six categories, measured each level of education as its own distinct attribute. So for example, first grade would be one, second grade would be two, and so on and so forth, all the way up until some people have as many as 12 years of advanced education. So now we have 24 different attributes for this variable, and each one of these creates a long enough continuous variable that we can measure it at the ratio level instead of the ordinal level. So once again, looking at the current variables, male, female, sex, this would be considered a nominal variable. Education is an ordinal variable. Age is a ratio variable. The year of attack is currently coded as 2018 and 2019. So we could think of this in two different ways. If we had a much larger sample or population, looking at 50 years of analysis, this would be a continuous variable. However, the way it's currently presented as only two different years, maybe we wanna make this into a nominal variable comparing 2018 to 2019. So we could say this is currently nominal. However, if we had a larger sample looking at a much longer period of time, and we were trying to determine whether or not instances of attacks went up over a long period of time, then this would be considered a continuous variable. This example of fatalities would be considered a ratio variable. However, this alternative example, as I've noted above, is considered a nominal version of this, measuring whether or not instances involved 10 or more fatalities. And similarly, injuries are also currently coded as a ratio variable. This concludes our understanding of nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio variables. These are going to be especially important when taking into consideration the different types of data analysis that are going to be used. So for example, chi-square, t-test, and regression analyses all require different levels of measurement when being conducted. And thus, it's very important to understand these preliminary categorizations for variables so we can conduct more advanced types of data analysis.